Oh, now we're recording. Oh, that feels so much better to be back. It does. It does. Uh, I think we were really borderline for a while of whether or not we were even going to have a democracy. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, it's, remember when we're like 2020 is going to be over and then like, hooray, and then 2021 just turned into a dumpster fire almost immediately. So that was fun. Here's my proposition, and that's, 2020 didn't really even get bad until like the end of February, beginning of March. Yeah. So I still count this time period as 2020. Mm. So if stuff hasn't gotten better by March, then I'm going to write 2021 off. But like right now, I still count this as like, I'm going to let 2020 have a full year of dog shit. Yeah. And then we can right. push that aside. Exactly. We, we 2020 can have until March. And then after March, it's just going to, we got to have this shit get better. Yes. So, uh, I do want to start off with, um, I've been a busy little beaver. Fantastic. And I, and I bought a thing. A thing. I, I bought a thing. And I don't know if you can see this now. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. So I woke up on um, New Year's Day and the wife turned to me. Mind you, this is a person who like hates my like pension for like just bringing home random vehicles. And of course. Went, I think we need a camper. And then by the end of that day, I went, we went out, we looked at a couple of campers and we came home with uh, this. Actually, it was delivered by the gentleman a couple days later. But this is our uh, Damon Daybreak uh, RV. It's, I say it's 35 feet. The missus says it's 32 feet. I don't know. We've always had like a size issue. Um, Size issue, huh? Yeah, exactly. You know, okay. like, you know, we say things are a certain size in front uh-huh. of people. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I say four, she says two. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. So the important part is. I, I have an s- RV. Yeah. You have an RV. I can see here from the headlights that these are F-150 headlights from like the 90s, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you are correct. Okay, let's okay. do some. Let's Let's test your knowledge here. So okay. I only have the one image up on the computer right now because I, I'm a fool and I don't prepare very well. Of course. So, so what can you surmise? So you got that it's Ford headlights. Okay, so- it's Ford headlights, mm-hmm. and this is not a diesel because the engine is very clearly in the front. Mm-hmm. So I'm imagining that it is the. Can you tell me the year of the RV? I'm going to guesstimate that it's about an O2. Uh, you're a little like near the end of this line it was in 1997 is when this 97 was okay mm-hmm. so is it a 6.8 v10 or is that too new that's too new this is okay. the last year of this motor if that helps 97 last year of that motor is this a is it a ford or a chevy motor it is a ford motor it is a ford motor mm. It's not that four nine. Is it a uh, Windsor? Is it a 351 Windsor? It is not. I, okay. All right. It is. I, I, will, I will spare you. It is a seven point. I can't remember if it's five or three liter. It's the biggest V8 Ford ever made up until I think um, this year, maybe, or last year. Is it, the, wait, is it the gas or the diesel? It's the gas. It, it's a 7.5 liter V8 gas motor. 7.5. Yeah, yes. I'm gonna search that. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, it's even, 460. Yeah. Okay, yes. seven five. Mm-hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. how many MPG? 14.3 on Pirate 4x4. So, no, 240 yeah. horsepower. Okay, yep. Um, uh, all right, as far as I'm aware, yeah, it's about 240 horsepower, but it's crazy like pound feet of torque, of course. Yeah, yeah, things. yeah. So, uh <laughs> I, I I absolutely love this thing. Um, if the people who watch YouTube, I'm going to put out a YouTube video here soon about it. And if you're just watching this on the, uh, or if you're just listening to this in your car, uh, picture a RV. I mean, I can't really describe it. It's it's not a Winnebago. It's this is a Damon. And I don't know why I always say it funny like that, but it's D A M O N, and it's like Damon Damon. How would you say that? Damon. Damon. Yeah, but it has no it- D at the end. Is it a dually rear? It is a dually rear. Okay, cool. It does that thing that some of these RVs do where the tires are like way inboard of the fender. Yeah. And it looks kind of like it's up on stilts sort of. And like the front tires actually look really small. Yeah. They're huge when you get up on them though. It's, okay, uh, gotcha. Yeah. So this was, 
I, I am so tickled pink by this thing that I got it. So I, I'm looking forward to doing stuff. We're going to renovate the inside, which is why I only have the one picture right now, but okay. it, it's going to be fun. But you can also see here another little project I got going on next to the uh, RV. Do you see is that, that a snow plow? That is a snow plow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to turn the Ranger into a snow plow? Correct. So that's fantastic. Um, that's a good use of the Ranger. I like that. Um, yeah, the thing is, I got the snowplow for very cheap, and um, having weighed it, it might weigh more than the fucking uh, Ranger weighs. So, Fantastic. Okay. So this okay. is good. it's going to be very interesting getting this thing hooked up. So, but this was it was fun, a great way to start off a new year, like New Year, New Me, New RV. So that's that's exactly what happened there. And then um, speaking of that, I decided to do this to the car. I did see this on Twitter that you have wrapped it in this red red base with white, black, and gray. And a little uh, bit of blue in here. Let me see blue, if I yeah. a better picture of it. Oh, there, there we go. go. There's, yes. there's a good picture of it. And yeah. you got the Steelys on there as well. See, that's a good looking car. Like that's I, I do quite like that. Mm -hmm. You probably have the only one. Yes. So um uh, uh, Ike, you didn't do a license plate doodle. Well, I don't care. Okay. Uh the <laughs> I, what do you think? Do I need mud flaps? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Light, light bar? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So that, that brings me to kind of the next thing I want to talk about here, which is like New Year's, like new car uh, resolutions. I just pulled up a picture of Fiero just so we can look at it and you can see okay. the deflated Christmas decorations in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's so I got now a Ranger, an RV a fiero my fiesta and then the wife's car and um the wife has the escape yeah the escape yeah. yes okay all right yeah so i i, I totally space that so yeah so the escape is just keeping that thing maintained because um the wife has you know i don't know how your yours is with this but when it comes to like you are in charge of the car and that's puts a lot of otis on me because i never drive that thing so it's like oh look it's a thousand miles over its oil change limit <laughs> yeah why aren't you paying attention to me because i never drive the thing so but it's one of these things where i have to get this rv working right mm -hmm. so and if i get the rv working i need to haul something to somewhere so obviously i need a trailer so i can right. do car stuff with it so what do you think like what is an event that I need to go to. I'll give you a couple of options here. So should I take it to like, um, there's like the Corvettes at Carlisle and there's like a Fiero section or it's GM at Carlisle where they have like the little right uh, Fiero section for it. Although I think I talked to the organizer. I think it's already up to like 60 cars. And like last year, you know, obviously with the COVID, I think it was like 30 cars total. Mm -hmm. so should I, that seems like a fun thing to do. The other fun thing would be just to take the RV like out to the West Coast before the end of the year. Yes. Or do you think a better option is to uh, take the Fiero uh, to an autocross course, a rally course, and a drag racing track? One of those three things I need to pin down as an objective for the end of this year. So I am firmly in the anti-standing around in parking lots looking at cars uh, camp. Yes, I did go to Radwood. It was like the second Radwood in San Francisco that I went to put on by Joel Opnick's Bradley Brownell, yeah. which was actually a really cool event. I did enjoy mm -hmm. it. And it was yeah. in a really nice landscape. And, you know, you're kind of on the edge of the bay and the people and you had the vibe of the 90s stuff. And yeah. so it really jived with me. Yes. Uh, Carlisle, my understanding is it's still very much a traditional uh standing around looking at cars type of venue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that I have always found to be atrociously boring. <laughs> so much like if you happen to have that weekend available, I don't know how far that is from you. Uh, please like, yeah, sure. Go do that. Mm -hmm. But if the options are that or take the RV to the West coast, I'm going to go West coast every single time. Well, I know I, as, as soon as I heard West coast come out of your mouth, I'm like, yeah, I, I should have known where this was going. <laughs> And like you could have said something else, I probably still would have come down anti Carlisle. Yeah. Well, do you think <laughs> I, I do like the idea of getting the Fiero out to a few events this year too? I think like, you can do both. Like I think you mm -hmm. can get the Fiero to an autocross and a drag strip and still have time for either going and standing with old men or going to the coast. All right. 
So I think you. I think there's time to do both. Oh. Um, what I can see here, the Fiero needs a little bit of uh, work before you start sending her to the autocross track. However, right, yeah, but it's set up for rallycross right now. I mean, you really can't see the tires in this picture, but it's got some big beefy, you know, boys on it. It's so, it is lifted. I can, did you lift that, or is this just what it looks like? That's just stock suspension from an eighty. Five with the 86 wheels that's just how it looks okay okay so, and it's actually a little bit sunken into rear and it still sits up that high which is crazy to me yeah you so, need about a two inch uh drop there my friend yeah i agree with you on that <clears throat> mud flaps uh you know i think with stickers the mud flaps would look good okay so you need some type of like relevant branding on it that would make it and then you could do the mud flaps and it'd be like oh okay I, I, I kind of want to put the like stupid like bread, eggs, like grocery list thing down the side. I think that would be very mm. fitting with the vehicle. Yes, so, I'd agree with that. I also, That's good. I also kind of want to paint it, you know, like glow in the dark paint that they like you can like buy like the uh, Rust-Oleum glow in the dark paint. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to paint that on this car just to see what happens. I think that'd be good. The other thing I want to ask Ike is how rare is that wing? Um, It's relatively rare like not all the fieros came with it most of them had a um trunk lid or had the um luggage compartment on the back of it especially okay. especially on the notch back of this but it's not the rarest thing there's a higher wing that's rarer so so could you get one of those like just the wing yeah i could probably get one of those yeah actually can you get two of them how much is two wings I mm, those I could probably with my Fiero connections from like the local people I could probably get two wings for like two hundred bucks for like the pack. So, so what I'm thinking is, uh, have you seen the film uh, Cars? Uh, Cannonball Rally. No, I have not. Okay, so the feature car is the Lamborghini Countach, right? Mm -hmm. In that film, there is not only the wing on the back of the Countach, as we're familiar with now, there is also a wing on the front. And I think this car is of the era that you could pull that off. So I want to see another one of these wings on the front of the Fiero. And then, are you familiar with the Ford Escort the Super Duper, whatever the fuck it's called? Yeah, yeah where it has the I wing would, on the notch. Right. I would also like a wing on the top of the, this would be the B slash C pillar right here. Right, yeah. Like, I, I want all the wings if you're going to go for rally cross. Like, and it like look right. right there. Yes, yeah. yes, right there. Mm -hmm. I, I've been looking. I thought you were planning on like the movie Cars in the beginning, where it's the one car where it has the wing on top of the wing on top of the wing. Right, back right. Here. Yeah. So I mean, it, it'd be that'd be fun. Um, I actually was. <laughs> so that was a no. <laughs> that'd be uh fun. Well, I was. It's funny you say that though, because I was looking at um, so in the Fieros the where the fan comes in and like, can you see my mouse? I don't know how yes, this works. Yes, so uh, for those of you <clears> listening, <throat> I'll try to describe, but where the, where the radiator comes out the, and before you get to the um, like cargo compartment, which is right over the wheels, the there's like a little uh, air passage. So basically the air comes in through the front, it goes mm -hmm. through the radiator, it hits this block and like gets shot down Stout. immediately. Mm -hmm. So like high speed, you get like fairly Some lift. Pissed, yeah. Lift in the yeah. front. So especially with the, I have the aero package, I guess is what it's called. So, mm -hmm. cause it was like, uh, we need to make it look more like a firebird. Well, what if we just slap the firebird front end on it? Ah, that works. So I need to get some hood louvers up here or I need to get a front splitter. I don't, or both. So you don't need hood louvers. What you need to do, <clears throat> have you seen here, un unshare your screen and I okay. will share mine. Okay. Yeah. And there we go. There we um, go. Perfect. Yeah. And we're just going to go right here for, C7.R Corvette. That way it's the right uh, sort of brand yeah. for you. Mm. I'm sorry, we're going to do live Googling here. That's, I know it's the we best. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's what makes this show entertaining and fun. Okay, there we go. We that's, a good, that's a good picture because you can kind of see what I'm going to be talking about here. And we're going to come back over here. We're going to hit share screen mm -hmm. and we're going to put it on the Chrome. Here we go. Okay, so you can can you see my mouse? Um, maybe yes, I can. There it okay, is. cool. So the the front grill of this is the C seven R Corvette that they used yeah, yeah, up yeah. until last year. Mm -hmm. Um, so the grill goes in here, and then do you see this kind of carbon piece? It, the mechanic has the hood lifted up and off, like it's not yes. hinged. Mm -hmm. And there's a carbon piece that if the hood was on the car, 
goes down and towards the nose mm -hmm. and it sucks the air through the front grill and then exits out the top of the hood. Yes. And you can do that. And I mocked that up on the MR2. You could very easily cut holes along, like cut literally just two rectangles yes. on your hood and then bend them down and then cut out kind of the firewall or not firewall, but like support thing in there and you yeah. could get a really good induction type situation or that would go out and you would get downforce that way and then you could put your splitter on and then you would have actual front end stuff doing the work yes um i i know exactly what you're talking about um i think there's actually an example of that in the let me see if i can this is gonna be more live googling yes well oh, it's, also, it. it's also going to require so there is a fairly big um, Fiero community. Of course, of course. Um, so it's live Fiero. What? 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 A, forum. I can't, I can't spell garage for some reason. G A R A G E. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. Google wants to garage. Yeah. Oh my God! I hate Chrome. Uh, <laughs> it, it, let me go hood. Um, let's see if I can find this and I think I can share this without, so we're going to steal his YouTube via YouTube here. There uh, we go. So we'll Sounds go, good. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I'm looking to do a thing. So as you can see, when I do my little share screen and I do this bit here, we can share that. So this guy, uh, garage list, which is a great guy here. Uh, you can see what he did is he yes. literally cut and bent yes, down. That. Yes. yes. So you can see, like right here, and it he, it comes up. Yeah, there's an ad coming up. Up, oh, and we're oh, fantastic. Gonna... Grammarly. Yeah, you stop. You can learn all the English. Yeah, <laughs> not a good service. Come on now, we're a duolingual household over here. All right, that's how we operate. So, but yeah, it's he does a fairly good job, and like this episode, he doesn't finish. But it's the fiberglassing that, like, because there is a between the radiator and that bulkhead, there is basically nothing in the Fiero. So it's just wasted space. So it's easy to just bend and do, but I'm a little nervous about doing that with the car just because it's like, my. have you seen my ability to, to do anything? It's not very good. So I, we, we talked about how you have connections and stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the going rate for one Fiero hood? Mm -hmm. See, probably in the order of, uh, oof, for a hood, if I can find it at, where I think I can find it probably between 100 and 300 bucks, depending on condition, because they do get kind of beat up and they're kind of like, if you get a good one, it's in like, they kind of are sought after. And right. has, so I don't know. Eh, I don't know. So why don't you find a dog shit hood? And then fuck it up. And then fuck it up. And then yeah. if you, if you want to daily drive the car or whatever, you can switch the hoods out. Mm. I, I'm with Have you. an arrow hood yeah. and then a, a, a race hood if you will mm -hmm. see the problem right now though is with that is like there's certain stuff i can just shove into the fiesta and then there's stuff that's too big to fit on the fiesta <laughs> and then the ranger's not plated yet and neither is the rv and it's one of those things where it's like um where am i going to shove this thing to like transport it over so, all right so then solution there too are you familiar with the dakar rally yeah, just strap it to the fucking hood. We need to we need to strap it yeah. to the roof oh, yeah. of the. Mm -hmm. We need to one mm -hmm. on a day to day basis. I want to see a spare tire on the roof of the Fiesta, just so you have the full rally cred. And yeah. then in this instance, I would like you to take the tire out of the basket and then put the hood on the mm -hmm. basket. I'm I'm with you on this. I don't I don't know. It, it's a very. I do need the roof basket. Roof basket or roof rack. Because I feel like the basket's pretty limiting, and it's only good if you have like just lots mm -hmm. of shit up there. Yeah. Whereas if you have the rack, that gives you the options for bicycle, hood, mm -hmm. snowboard, skis, yeah. car part, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas the basket's kind of a weird shape, and you got to cram everything in there. Is yeah. it really for utility, or is it for every now and then when you need to carry something stupid? Right. So, no, that's a good point. So, hmm. which would be the tire most days. I yes. really, I really respect that. It doesn't have to be the right size tire up there. <laughs> you yeah. can just put whatever you want up top, and you'd be fine. Yeah. Well, I have a bent rim. I'll just strap the bent rim up there. Yes. There fine. you go. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Oh man, I, I do really want to do rally, 
rally inspired fiesta is kind of where i'm going to go with that from into future here and i think that's another goal is to get the you know kate what do you think casey daylighters up there or what do you think yes with the ugly smiley face covers well I, i'm just going to keep the covers off of it so i can blind the people who <laughs> blind me every time i go out oh it's it's infuriating <laughs> the, the worst part about driving a small car around fucking like yee yee country out here is it's just all the time like blinded by stuff fantastic oh it's awful so oh man so what's your new year's car resolution here buddy my new year's car resolution is to figure out what the hell i'm gonna do and i've (laughs) i've kind of wavered back and forth um a couple times i'm gonna pull up one more thing while i'm talking um and it's i've gone off of the bmw uh for now and the reason is i realized the other day that the entirety of my driving is in straight lines because I live in the Midwest now and I hate myself for it. So, (laughs) I mean, I went back to uh, California a while. I could talk about that as well. We didn't really discuss that. I'm going to put that in the show list anyway. um, (laughs) So it'll tie in nicely. You'll, you'll know when I tie it in. Anyway, I recently went back to California and you're just beat over the head with really, really good driving roads, no matter where you go. Right. And I really, I think, undervalued that while I lived there. Mm-hmm. So my motivation to get a sports car that I can actually drive on the road is pretty low at this point because I'm not a big fan of the, let's see how much power I can get out of a car or 600 horsepower crazy thing. I'm going to keep adjusting my chair. Right. Um, <laughs> and so I just kind of like, I don't, I don't know. And I don't have the MR2 here because the MR2 is not finished because it's not just my car. Right. Um, so I've got that going and it's like, I, do, I don't really think I'm going to spend the money on a sports car at right. this juncture. And it's, you know, okay, even if I did want to go to the track or whatever it may be, I don't have anything to get the car to the track with. Because while the 4Runner is fantastic with the right. 4.7 liter V8, um, it's not quite enough wheelbase (laughs) to feel good about towing something that's really heavy. Like you can do it. It's fine. It's rated to tow (laughs) 7,600 pounds or something stupid like that. It's it's like at least 6,000. It might be 6,500 for the four wheel drive (laughs) and 7,500 or whatever for the two wheel drive. Yeah. But I pulled that U-Haul trailer out here and it pulled like shit. (laughs) So like, it was like, ah, but when I pulled the MR2 around on the, we had a flatbed trailer that's designed for a John Deere tractor. Mm-hmm. When I pulled the MR2 around, it was like, ah, I could do this. This this is manageable. Okay. So whatever I do, I think I'm going to end up needing a truck. And because I'm a super uh, Toyota brand whore, yes. there's all the rage right now about the 2022 Tundra coming out. Mm. And this is a rendering. Motor Trend did this based on some spy shots that have been leaked and stuff yeah. like that. And I, I have to imagine that this is what the pro is going to look like or the off-road or whatever. Yeah. I don't think the real grill will be this um, shouty. Mm. But I do think that the headlight shape is going to be pretty similar. And I also think the cab is going to be pretty similar to the cab they have now. Right, um, right. Having worked at Toyota, the only reason you sell Tundras right now is it's more powerful than a 5.3 or gives the illusion thereof. Yeah. And the cab is fucking huge. Like it's a full Ford F three fifty sized cab. Like it's massive because it's just the first two rows of a Sequoia. Yeah, it's huge. So those are the two reasons, and that's why I think that Toyota, who don't really like changing stuff, I think they will find a way to keep the cab very similar. And if you scroll down here, they also think that the um, back of the truck is going to look pretty similar too. And I have to agree with that. The what big change they're going to do. And as they mentioned here, this truck was built in 08 was when it was originally designed. They launched it right into the $4 a gallon gas and recession, which was a really good timing. Uh, I think they're going to use the twin turbo V8, or I'm sorry, twin turbo V6 that's in the Lexus LS 500. Mm -hmm. So it'll get a little bit better mileage, I think, than my 4Runner will. It'll have a lot more power than my 4Runner will, and the payload capacity will be much higher. Yeah. So Tundras right now, I have no reason to think that they're going to raise the price of the Tundra. Like that would be stupid of them since they already don't sell very many. Well, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's going to be in the mid forties, I think, to get like a nicely equipped one. Like you could scrape the bottom of the barrel and get one for like 37. That's got mm-hmm. like nothing. Yeah. I think I would get like a limited that would end up being kind of the mid low forties. Yeah. Um, and that's, this is the interior of the current one, right, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I just... I think I'm going to do that either way. And then that will probably be the last pickup truck I ever buy. 
And it's yeah. either this or I'm going to buy like a 2015 or 14 like Super Duty Ford with the 6.7. And that, e- either one of these will be the last pickup I, draw, I buy. Right. I mean, that that's the nice thing about the Toyota pickup trucks is you can do that and you do know like this is the last time I'll need to buy something like this. Right. So I, um, I don't see myself buying an RV, like a trailer, for example, that this yeah. will tow. Like I'm not going to be towing something that weighs more than 10,000 pounds. Right. Yeah. Like uh, the other nice thing too, I, I'm just like enamored with that color, which if you're going to get one, you need to get it in a color that's not boring. I'm yes. Just telling you that right now. Too many truck people. And like the default Tundra color is either white or silver, yeah. which sucks. Toyota mm-hmm. has some kick ass colors. There was a customer that came in and bought a, we had one a while back that was the cavalry blue, which is kind of the flat powder blue that yeah. they put on a lot of the, uh, um, yeah, yeah. on the, in the FJs, they had it for a little while. Yeah. So they had that. And then you could get a, on the limited, when you had leather, you could get a tan interior Ooh. and it looked freaking sweet. Yeah. Um, and so I love selling those when we'd have them because you'd, you'd we super limited build because people are very boring and they want black with gray or gray with black and all right. the lame stuff. So they, they do make a good slate of colors. I think that'll be something I do. Yeah. So I'm kind of thinking about that. And then the place I work now, everybody has motorcycles, <laughs> not a big motorcycle guy, but again, right. the appeal of like dirt biking to me is kind of cool because I did mm-hmm. the off-road thing for so long. Yes. I keep looking at these Africa twin uh, Hondas, which are like a thousand CC adventure bike that, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, you ride it upright. It's got some good suspension on it, but then you can go on the freeway basically as fast as you want and be pretty comfortable. BMW really popularized this kind of style of bike with their GSs. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this is just like a Honda one, basically. You can get uh, 2019 and 2020 models that are still new on the show floor. Mm-hmm. In like the ten to eleven thousand dollar range, which is a lot for a motorcycle, but this is like a fifteen thousand dollar motorcycle when new. Yeah, and then these hold their uh, value super. Like you can find thirty thousand mile BMW adventure bikes that are still stupid money. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking about a, that too. I'm not normally a, like a motorcycle like aesthetics guy, but that's a very good looking motorcycle. I like the appeal of yeah. I can seamlessly rip from the access road onto the logging road and right. continue doing basically the same mm-hmm. speed. Yeah. And it, yeah, this one does look really, really nice. The BMWs are like hit and miss like yeah. a lot. And I particularly like this red, white, and blue, the kind of classic Honda color mm-hmm. one up here on the top left. This one on the right is like this super fancy special edition thing. I would just get the normal one. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's good. It Ironically, I've been, I don't know why. So I always, you know, just browse for random things on the uh, Facebook marketplace. And I've kind of been enamored with buying a Vespa and turning. Have you ever seen off-road Vespa racing? Yes. Yes, yes. I have. I, I kind of want to get a off-road Vespa. So that's on my like list of like, I don't know why Facebook just knows everything about me, but I'm like, well, oh, I know they're listening. Is that um like, i kind of want an off-road Vespa now and now I think I'm probably going to have that's kind of another objective before the end of the year before the end of the year yeah yeah probably a knockoff brand one just because an actual Vespa those things are expensive man so the the trick with the Chinese ones is that they all use the same parts yeah so if you can find a Chinese scooter for no money um Mm -hmm. replacement parts when you do actually finally track down the part that you're looking for very cheap that's good very cheap Mm mm-hmm so yeah, we've got that going. The last thing kind of that I wanted to talk about for this new year that I want to do is, again, I'm a big Toyota guy and this Tundra thing really appeals to me. I already mm-hmm. have the Camry. I have a Forerunner. Yeah. And it, my wife's going to be pretty close to graduating school by the end of the year. She'll have yeah. like one semester left. Mm-hmm. And so we've talked about like, well, well, we should get you a nice car for having finished grad school and done all the cool right. stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's really leaning towards a Cayenne, which is a nice car, but I don't know if yeah. I want to pay to maintain my buddy's Cayenne's doing all right. Right. Um, and but. so I don't, she's not a big pickup person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was wondering like, well, I could get it, you know, I could get rid of the forerunner in the Camry. We could get a RAV4 yeah. and you could ha- drive that around or whatever. And then I saw, and I remembered that the mm-hmm. Toyota is doing this GR Yaris uh, yes. thing. And so for those of you who don't know, uh, up until COVID happened, Toyota was going to do, this was going to be a homologation special Mm -hmm. rally car. And they were going to do it. It's like a 1.6 liter, three cylinder with a turbo and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And this little two door hatch 
that's actually got quite a lot of space it looks like in the front seat at least yes. like actually it looks like you can fit quite the person in there mm -hmm. which works for me of course with covid going on they didn't quite develop the actual race version in time so they're just going to go back to using the regular four-door one they've used the last couple of years mm -hmm. but they're still going to make this the cool road car version they're still making and there's reviews out there now and stuff and it's great looking car based on the everywhere else market yaris yeah they will not bring it to the united states correct yeah they've already talked about they're not going to do it and then they keep dropping all these hints and it's like quasi confirmed that they're going to put this drivetrain allegedly into the corolla xse oh. and they'll make like a gr corolla type deal and this is already this is the one you can buy today you can yeah, go yeah. to a Toyota dealer mm -hmm. and purchase this mm -hmm. is actually a good looking car and apart yes. from the steering feeling very toyota e yes. to where it's like mm -hmm. over boosted handles really nice mm -hmm. you just don't feel it but like when you actually chuck it at a corner it'll do what you ask yes but the thing i complained about because i sold a couple of these and i rented one to go to la once yeah was that the motor is so slow it's mm -hmm. like 168 horse or something which like yes. in general is fine but when Toyota makes a perfectly good right. two and a half liter four cylinder that makes 200 horsepower, it right. takes yeah. up the same amount of space that this does. I was like, what the hell? I can have a 200 horsepower fun car. I would have bought one. Right. So I'm hoping that they actually follow through and make my choice difficult. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with a garage that has a GR Corolla, a Tundra that's like brand new, yeah. and then a Cayenne, which will be just a atrocious amount of money going out in car payments right i'll probably end up buying one of them outright or paying putting a bunch of money down on multiple but right i i would buy that that's the thing it's yes. like ah that would be a kick-ass all-wheel drive like that's toyota really i think is still not quite they're getting there they're still behind the eight ball on fun sports cars they've got the new frs right. slash 86 slash mm -hmm. the brz already came out it looks great um but you don't have like actual performance variants of stuff. They have the regular cars with really too hard suspension. Right. So I'm hoping this kind of gets them back into it. They're selling Supras okay. They sold all their TRD Camrys, I think, have sold fine. Right. Well, They've sold a bunch of these hatches. I hope they do it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing is right now, what are you really competing with? Like Ford leaving that space. Ford was like the hot hatchback people like the american people mm -hmm. and they were really the only people they competed with at the time was volkswagen with the golf right and now you have um, the hyundai uh, yeah, thing whatever the they call it today the, the velocitor n is coming or is out is out and then they have the other one which is i forget which one it is if it's the sonata whatever it is the or the i30 or something yeah there's two oh. there's two of them they use the same yeah yeah but those are, I've driven one of those and those are great, you know, and they, it's one mm -hmm. of the few cars where I actually like my big ass feet fit in it. Right. The, um, um, it's a little tight still, but it's, it's, it works. And Corolla, I, every time I see one of these Corollas, I think, you know, it's a shame that it doesn't have a better motor in it because, and especially like if they bring this out, I know it's sacrilegious, but if they bring this thing out, with that hopped up drivetrain, but they put the automatic in it, they will sell these things like hotcakes because Americans hate driving stick shift, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this is a great car. And like Hyundai did the smart thing and they put the automatic in it. It took Fiat a couple of years to do it, but they put the automatic in the Abarth mm -hmm. and those started picking up sales, not enough to save the, you know, the 500 in the States, but good enough to like make a dent. And like, I see a bunch of them out on the roads now. Whereas right. I just hope they, they don't screw this up the wrong way. And just, I, I hate it. Bring a stick, obviously, but this is one of the few cars where I'm going to be like, just put the automatic in it just so we can actually like keep these here. Right. You know and saying? do a good job with the automatic. A lot of, right. with the exception of the 86, which is not Toyota's transmission, which is the other thing I want to touch on. Yeah. The automatic Toyota transmissions do not shift very fast when you pull the paddle. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that they fix whatever that programming issue is. Like it's, it's lines of code somewhere, right? Like fix it so that it doesn't Toyota tends to go very conservative as far as it's not going to give you gears. If it thinks the car doesn't want to do it, right. it takes a second to get going all that kind of, which sucks. Right. And if you're going too slow, it'll shift down for you. There's times that if you bang the red line in a gear, it'll shift for you. Even if you're in the manual mode, right? If they, I'm okay with an automatic 
if it does what I tell it to do when I have it in manual mode. Right. I have no qualms with that at that point. The other thing I would like about this is it will be an actual Toyota sports car. Right. And not yes. a, well, actually, it's a BMW. Well, actually, it's mostly Subaru's stuff, which mm-hmm. really keeps people. I don't know who people is because the people buying new sports cars probably actually don't care. Right. Um, I won't buy an FRS because all of these Subaru motors blow head gaskets. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. It's just how the engine is shaped. At some point, you're going to blow a head gasket because right. the heads slowly like to go like that with gravity. They're, mm-hmm. The gasket is placed vertical. And then as the heads wear down over time and you don't mm-hmm. change the coolant that happens yep. i'm not a fan of that i'm not a fan of the repair bills that these uh supers are going to have like yeah. it's going to start at some point i know that they did a really good job of trying to make sure it wouldn't the reality mm-hmm. is the day it does come at some point it's gonna suck right so having a toyota sports car i would put a lot of weight in into right. purchasing mm-hmm. well there's also the aspect of it too of yes you can get a you can get a BRZ for, you know, what, mid-20s, like, realistically? Yeah, if you want to get base, <clears throat> if you want a base one, you're in a mod or whatever, not mm-hmm. mid-20s. Yeah, whereas, and it's not a practical car, and, like, if you, but if you want a, if you're a young person looking for a semi-practical car, you get a, uh, you know, Corolla instead of the BRZ FRS 86, whatever the hell it is, you know, so it's it's a decent yeah, I like I like every time it I looks see good. That, yeah, uh, man, this it's, is we're looking at uh, for the listeners. BRZ. We're looking at the 2022 uh, BRZ, yeah. which looks like the middle part where the door is looks really similar, but the front end and the rear end actually look a lot different, and it's it's a good looking car. Yeah, yeah. Every every time, it you know what it, it kind of reminds me of a little bit is um, the RX7 for some reason. So I maybe yeah at the front a little bit you know what it reminds me of mm. is the it reminds me of the lexus rc yes. it looks very lexus rc it's like a scaled down lexus rc look at that yes right mm-hmm. there yes this is a much bigger car because we've seen these in person obviously yes mm-hmm. so the but if you look at pictures of these side by side it's the same car yeah so I like that. It looks a little bit more premium than the original 86 BRZ, mm-hmm. et cetera. They did look a little bit like, oh, we're competing with the yeah. Miata a little bit. And you could yeah. tell. Yeah. It still competes with the Miata, I think. But it's, on your practicality note, the back seat in this sucks. Yeah. But when you fold the rear seats down, yeah. there's a ton of space in there. Yeah. You can put a bunch of shit in the, like I'm talking two suitcases, a carry-on, a big old camera case. Mm-hmm. You could put all the stuff you would ever want in the back of a BRZ or an FRS or whatever. And I assume that this one will be the same way where when you fold the seat down, it's like full pass through. It's pretty wide. Yeah. I had a, a, a customer come in and she was an older lady that had a Chihuahua <laughs> and she bought it because when she folds the seat down, the Chihuahua walks from the trunk to back to the front of the car. And actually she like put a dog bed in it and it's huge back there. <laughs> And so it just like roams around in circles while she's in traffic or whatever. Right. So yeah, that, that's my resolution is really to figure out what the hell I'm going to do because this um, this X5, much as it runs really nice right now, I haven't had any issues recently, yeah. is not going to last forever. And I'm going to grow tired of it at some point because it is very slow. Yes. The 4Runner is not efficient. It gets about 16 to 17 miles to the gallon and that sucks. And if I'm going to move back to California, which at this point I think I will, mm-hmm. that's going to suck right. paying $4 a gallon for gas. Right. So I, I got to do something, you know, I got to, I got to make a move some direction. I'm kind of in a holding pattern right now with, you know, I've got some, some stuff that I'm holding over from the COVID kind of laid off, yeah. spent money. I didn't really have type of situation. Yeah. So I'm kind of, you know, in a holding pattern with that, uh, trying to get that paid off. But I, I do think that by December, I'm going to be trying to make a move some direction. And if this Tundra's out, I'm definitely going to look at that. Mm-hmm. If this Corolla's out, I'm going to look at that. Yeah, I will have to see. Yeah, it's it's hard to be resolute. And that's the hard part going into uh, 2021 is like the resolutions like, I mean, 2020, I mean, basically every resolution you had from 2020, you're probably carrying over to 2021 because 2020 just whoo. right didn't really. I yeah. mean, people will hit their personal health goals last year, which I thought was cool. And it's like, well, yeah, if you don't have yeah. to work, it's easy to go work out every day when you go for a jog. Yeah, at will. Yeah. So, you know. That's kind of neat. I do want to talk about also 
Um, we had a listener question, as a yes. matter of fact. Yes. So we had a, let me just look here. It was a Glenn in Wilmington. <laughs> Glenn in Wilmington. Uh, he noted that not only was our description of H2OI and the coast sort of Delaware, Maryland region, he not only noted that that was a very accurate description of said region, he also asked if we would do a quick rundown on the Candy K27. Have you heard of the Candy K27, Ike? No, you, you, you brought this up when we were doing our little like pre thing, like you we're like, oh, I got to Google this. And I thought it was actually candy. Like there was nope. a candy called like the K-27. I'm very, no. so I'm this very is, confused. This is a new for the United States. And it turns out, if you had to guess, where a new car company is coming from that's trying to break into the United States with an EV, what country do you think that came from? Uh, is it um, Belarus? No, it's China. I'm shocked. It is a Chinese car company. Um, if you take a look at this, looks very similar to Jason Torchensky's uh, cheap electric three thousand dollar thing that he bought. Okay, so looks very similar. So for the listeners listening by the podcast, I, I yes. want to take a stab at describing this thing. So what was that little like Honda? Um, concept ev they say they're gonna make oh the the beat or the whatever it's it's not even as good looking as that what it really looks like is a mini cooper that's been squeezed uh from side to side that's a little bit narrower and then a bit taller to be a sort of really stupid upright proportion right and there's video shows it in a lane and you could fit almost two of these wide in a standard lane uh, i was gonna say the um bastard child of a First generation uh, Scion XB yes. and a London taxi cab. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It looks dreadful. Yeah. So I, I, I don't kinda, know where I, I don't know kinda, where he saw this. I kind of love it though. <laughs> I I kind of know that it's going to be a pile of shit. Well, obviously, just, just looking yeah. at it, and like I know you have an affinity for the uh, Mitsubishi uh, shit box that they yes. make, yeah. uh, Mirage. Uh, I actually saw a pink one the other day. Mm, yeah, the first time I've seen a pink one in person. Uh, like not like out because when I would go to the LA Auto Show, they always showed it in pink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but this is the first time I've seen one like in public. Yes. Like not at a car event that was pink. <laughs> I was like, wow, look at that. They still have them. Yeah. So this the uh, Candy K twenty seven for the listener. I'm currently on their website. It looks like it's a four seater wink wink that yeah. nobody fits in. Like you can probably put two people and some stuff in it, but it does have four doors. Looks like it's got about a 13 to 14 inch wheel. It's a very small car. Mm-hmm. No haggle price, $17,499. As low as $99.99 after federal tax credit. So you figure, okay, 10 grand, or let's call it what it actually is, 18 grand after right. delivery and all that other shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what are we what are we getting for specs here and you scroll down on the website and you find that it gets 59 miles seventeen thousand five hundred dollars plus some tax and yeah. whether you get the rebate or not the reality is people who need the rebate usually don't qualify for the whole rebate because of how the taxes work in this yeah. country which is jacked yep that's a separate thing so if you make 150 grand a year you can get one of these for 10 grand but if you're poor and you need like a cheap car you're gonna have to pay the full price. Yeah, fifty nine miles American. for seventeen yeah. five. Absolutely fantastic value there. So you get sixty <laughs> miles, and let's let's be honest there, fifty miles. You get fifty miles of range right. out of yeah, this. You're, lucky, you're gonna yeah. run the heater. You're gonna run the air conditioner. Yeah, the interior does look really nice. It's got a nice little dashboard screen thing. It's got a very simple control for the HVAC. Everything looks very simple, but kind of moderny in the way that you know Chinese companies can do. 17.5 for a 50 mile range. Ike, what do you think a 2012 Nissan Hold Leaf on. costs? Hold on, go down, go, go down, go down. <laughs> go down, okay. Yeah, okay, all right, okay. all right. Okay. Here we so, go. This so, one's in a very fetching blue color. Right, so this is their official press photos. This is their photos, yes. Right, so do you notice that they couldn't even be bothered to open the door? In one of these <laughs> they, had, they didn't even want to roll the window down. You can almost see the reflection in the window of yeah. whatever the side of this building is or what. Yeah, they can't even roll the window down for their own photo. Yeah. Or right. open the door. Right. Like the actual interior pictures, when they take them, the interior looks really nice. But for some reason, you get this glare 
because it's shooting in on the driver's side so you can see the steering wheel and stuff yeah. and then the other thing with this angle is you can see smudges on the infotainment display yeah <laughs> so i don't know who took their pictures um but there's a range of colors and you're getting uh 114 mpge which as i've discussed before i think is just a measure of how efficient it is doesn't actually have anything to do with anything as far as miles right. but if you use it as an indicator of like this is how efficient this vehicle is at turning energy into motion yeah 114 is not terrible it's pretty good there's evs that are higher and there's evs that are lower right 2200 but pounds abs 165 65 14 so those are the tires on there Seating okay. for adults. I think that's really uh, aggressive on there. And I was looking around the website. They also do one that's called a K23. So I figured, oh, that'll be like a two-door sports right. car one. Yeah. No. The K23, a smaller number, is longer, <laughs> na narrower. It's more money. It's 27.5. It, it looks like a Yaris as described over the phone to like a child and then like, lengthened yeah exactly like wh what what yeah. the proportions on these are not attractive and then no. this one gets a nice 113 mile range right. so it's a little bit more bang for your buck but it is about 30 grand yeah. which as i can i realized earlier the current average transaction price for a new car in this country is forty thousand dollars which is what? obscene to me right i i don't understand where people have that much money to spend on a car um but their whole point is oh yeah 20 grand after federal tax credit you can get a hundred miles of range out of this ugly ugly car this somehow looks worse than the other one right the other one was it's so ugly it's cute this one is that like bad point of like it's trying to be aggressive and it just somehow makes this whole thing worse it looks like they went, we'll try and make a Yaris like mate with a overspeed warning. Overspeed warning. Fantastic. So anyway, yeah. back to, back to this, uh, the original one, the K27, yeah. the bigger number that's less expensive and appears to be less premium of a car, yeah. but the proportions look nicer. looks less stupid. Yeah. Um, Seventeen four ninety nine, or even if you assume you get the full federal tax credit, $10,000, yeah. which nobody's going to get. Yeah. No. You can get a used 2012 Nissan Leaf with 47,000 miles for the low, low price of $3,500 that yeah. gets 52 miles of range in Mission Viejo, California, which is in Southern California. So if you are the type of person who thinks, ah, I could get a 50 mile EV car because I don't live that far from the shops and I don't live that far from my work. Yeah. And I bicycle most days and you know, that kind of thing. And I, I have my big family sedan for when we want to go on trips. I already have that. Not a big deal. I just want like a nice in town car. Would you like to spend 17,000? I don't even know where the fuck I put it. It's all the way up to $17,000 yeah. on a shit box like this mm -hmm. that will almost certainly fall apart immediately. Right. Or would you rather have a actual like car, a Nissan Leaf, which is actually apart from, you know, the range goes down really fast because yeah. the batteries aren't very good. Um, is an actual like hatchback that yeah. looks, I think in this day and age, you can say the Leaf looks normal. In 2012, it looked very in your face and it was like, oh, that's an electric car. It looks all yeah. different. Today, the actual first gen Leaf hasn't aged that badly and does look like a normal car. Right. The, the thing with the Leaf is I do know someone who lives in Alexandria that commutes into DC, which I think their total commute is maybe 10 miles from where they live to mm -hmm. their place of business and back again. So not like so like a five mile trip 10 miles round trip and they ran out of electricity once so <laughs> that's an issue with these things like right like you just get like now dc traffic's horrendous and you end up sitting in traffic a lot but it's like that's inexcusable the I do like it's got it's like I'm a I I could go to the HOV I, lane like yeah, yeah. Which, which aren't valid any oh no it's an, it's an EV you can still use those right. I was gonna say for a while in California th those were no longer valid right. 
but it's also like, what are you doing in the HOV lane? Like, you need to get home. Like, go right, home. Exactly. You can't be going that fast. Right. You'll sap all the range. Yeah. <laughs> the 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 thing with the Leaf, I I like the Leaf. The Leaf is probably going to be the car I get when I like go into the EV front, just because it is such a. It, it's a Nissan, so it's it's. I'm not gonna say it's like the best built or it's like greatly built, but it's it's it's, it's built. It's built <laughs> to a tolerance that like a manufacturer had to sign off on as right. much as I like Tesla. And this is where the fucking Tesla stands. are going to come get me. I with the picture, go back to the candy. The, the first thing I thought when I saw that picture of the candy where it's like, Oh, we didn't, we took the picture from outside looking in and we didn't open up the door. It's because the first time I sat in a model three, like the model three is great from about waist level up. And then like, when you get down below waist level and you start like touching things, especially when they first came out, like a lot of stuff just wasn't put together. Right. And like, it was a lot of like really cheap plastics. And I'm just imagining like, especially like that dashboard picture, like everything's dark. So you can't see like the carpet and all that stuff. So it's just like, there's probably just like terrible plastics or like just bare sheet metal in there. And they're just trying to hide it as much as possible. And the way this looks, you can see even on the regular picture. Yeah. The way it's designed, this is either really, really nice and premium, yeah. or it's built to a cost and it's dog shit. Right. And if you're curious which one that might be, I'm going to scroll back up here and remind you that this vehicle is $17,499 as imported from China. Right. So I think that would speak to the quality, whereas these Leafs were like kind of expensive, right? Yeah. Well, that was the thing. So we were talking about the price of new cars. And one of the things I find interesting, I think we need to put a note in it for uh, next time we go around. Right. The, like the leaf kind of suffered like a weird, like super like deflation in its value because Mm. they were like $40,000. And then like, you got like a tax credit, which like bumped it down to like 32 and all that stuff. And like, it's one of those things where it's, so that tax credit drove it down and then people were, looking to buy like the used ones when those came onto the market and those were actually more than like a new one with the tax credit. So it called this like, it caused this weird like rush to the bottom with the price of uh, Leafs, Mm -hmm. which like even the EV like 500s, which is what we're looking at now. If you're on the, if you're on the video, you can see, but I've just pulled up a 500 EV, which is a great looking car Mm -hmm. and has the same sort of range issues when you get them used yeah. this one actually they're genius that they have a 500e and then they put the a barth wheels on it, it actually yes. looks really good that does look good <laughs> um there, there's another interesting one i know they sold it only in california they the mercedes b electric i have never seen one of those in person I, so i don't even know if they ever actually did it i share a parking lot with a guy who who drives one with a so, b with a b electric. 250e oh my god yes. here it is yes and yeah Search range all of them yeah all the distances yeah yeah holy the, shit <laughs> i have never seen one before yeah. i always heard about it yeah. i had never seen one mm-hmm. it, it was one of those 10 that, grand look yeah, at that i know this is one of those cars where you know i'm a car nerd because i was walking down the street and i saw it as he was getting out of it and I freaked the hell out and I was like, you gotta be because it DC, especially more rare. Right. So I like ran up to the guy and I was talking to him. He's like, Oh, I imported it from California. Like someone bought it new, leased it, and then they sold it. And I like grabbed it from that guy and shipped it over here. I'm like, that's great. This is this is the car I would get. Because yes, it's it's not as cheap as some of the other options, but and it's probably not as reliable as that leaf. But I bet it's close because yeah. if you look at it, it has the normal Mercedes. It has like the Mercedes Sprinter style switch gear. Right. Like not the fancy shit. Right. Like this usually is fine. Yes. I I, I just don't know about like Mercedes. Like a, I don't know like anything about the drivetrain with these things. It but can't the, be that hard. It's it's like it's a motor and a wire and that yeah. like it can't be that bad. It, it cannot be. If Tesla, who makes their cars like shit, yes, <laughs> doesn't have driveline problems, mm-hmm. Mercedes, which is the oldest car maker in the world, cannot possibly have fucked it up. You it's say impossible. that. You say that, but they're like, we need to find a way to overbuild this motor. So, <laughs> but no, this it's is just a magnet. It's two magnets. That's all. It's just yeah. so doing its thing. 
Oh, yeah, like our clouds, like we decided to put eight magnets into it just in case one <laughs> magnet goes bad. Like 32 wires, no reason, just more wires, more better. Like we made it biodegradable. Like, good, the mice will eat it. Yeah, that's the good. Americans will buy another one. Exactly. <laughs> So where, 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 how much miles does this get? That's I, make- I would imagine just given the price, yeah. given the style of vehicle, 50 miles, probably. probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you, if you ask me how, what the range of a Fiat 500 E is, 50 20, miles, 25 miles. Um, <laughs> it's a Fiat. <laughs> like, let's be honest with it. With it. But no, these are great. I love these. Every time I see the thing, I'm like, I'm enamored by it. I know the V-Class is like commonplace all over the rest of the world, but like. Right. Like. This one says 87 mile range when new. I mean. So probably is 50 or 60. Yeah. Like you probably get a decent car out of this. Like this is something where you could, in theory, commute with it. Like 85 city, 82. Yeah. Who knows? Like who knows how they're actually like qualifying that. Right. But yeah, better than the candy. And like even like a seventeen thousand yes. dollar one is still gonna be better than that fucking candy. So. Yeah, I I would one hundred percent agree with that. At this juncture, there is no reason to buy a candy. And mm-hmm. if I was going to spend my money on a kitschy foreign vehicle that we're bringing over, kind of for laughs, yeah, uh, just for fun, mm-hmm. I would instead go for a. Uh, they're now able to sell those Mahindra Jeep things again yes fiat says 84 miles when it was new as well so i bet that's also 50 yeah exactly so yeah, yeah for the same price <laughs> wait, wait, as this, wait wait go back go back go back oh no i closed it it's gone oh, it's gone forever you missed it it said 50 percent off oil changes oh fantastic yes yes, mm-hmm. yes. yes. please give me 50 percent off oil changes on this car yes brilliant i wish i didn't close it because i would name and shame that dealer yeah that's the other thing that weird car twitter does not do they yeah. do not name and shame people and that makes me very upset Yes. I want to know the names of the shit bags who do the stupid things. Correct. I, I have to know. Yes. I have to. So, uh, Glenn and Wilmington, no, you should not buy a candy. You no. should buy a any other shit box EV that you can pick up for literally less than five grand. Yeah. If you would like to spring for the nice Mercedes one, which was a 2017, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that what it was? Yeah. For twelve grand, you can have one of those. Or for about fifteen, you can get the BMW i3 with the range extender, which is what people actually want. Yeah, they just don't know they want it, and they see that it's a BMW, and rightfully think, "Hmm, that's going to be expensive." Yeah, it probably is. But BMW's motorcycle engines are pretty good, and again, yeah. it's you can't fuck up the EV thing that hard. And the interiors are very simple on those. Yeah. So I've I've heard that the i3 there's the american version the gas tank on the rage extended ones was limited to like i think it was like a one and a half gallons or something like that yes so the thing with that is in order to be eligible for the um partial ev tax credit thing you have to be able to do more range on the electric than on the gas and if you have the range extender on that's technically gas propulsion according to the government you can go to I found a place in the Bay Area because I tried to get my mom to buy one and mm-hmm. she wouldn't do it. She ended up buying a Prius, which is fine. Um, there's a place in the Bay Area that will reflash that system to the European style. Hmm. And you can have full control over everything like you should be able to. And you can turn the range extender on at 95% charge and just nice. do your thing. So they've, and it fixes the issue with the max gas. It's not actually a, um, it doesn't prevent you from filling the tank. It just never lets you use the last quarter of a gallon or whatever it is. There's like a, it knows how much fuel you have. And so the gas tank is still two and a half gallons or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it just doesn't let you use the bottom part of the gas tank. Well, so you I- can have fuel in the car hmm. and it won't let you turn it. Even if you're dead in the water, yeah. no battery. And you've got, you can't turn the range. Like it will not let you use it if you've used more than the gallon and a half or whatever yeah. it is. See, I, I heard it was like a bladder or something that like they inputted into it. No, it's I believe it's electric. Mm. Like there's an actual sensor for it because oh. you can tune that out. Interesting. See, the i3 is where I'm kind of like in my head because again, the wife the wife deserves like a nice car by the mm-hmm. end of the year. So mm-hmm. same I, type of deal. Yeah. Right. I can't convince her to get a i3 because she thinks they're hideous, and I'm like, okay. <sighs> I know. The right color combo and that interior is super cool. Oh, yeah, it's too bad. No, I'm, I'm I'm with you. I I love that thing. It's one of the most comfortable cars I've ever been in. So if if you're in the market for an electric car, 100% BMW i3. 
absolutely. Uh, that that's where my that's where my brain and my heart is. The other thing I want to talk about, we're talking about Chinese companies and we're talking about EVs and things like that. Yeah. Um, so we're going to kind of segue into this. When I went back to California the other day, I actually drove a Chinese car from a rental company. Oh. Would you like to guess which brand that was? Volvo? Volvo. I did. I rented a Volvo S90. Yes. And it um, was very Volvo-y. And I think I determined at the end of my trip that the Volvo is the car everybody else should buy. <laughs> if you're if you're not me who likes driving cars like fast and like performancey mm. and stuff, yeah. everyone else should own a Volvo. So it should be an S90 or an S60 or the XC40, which you can get an all electric right now. You can get an all electric XC40. I think they're taking orders for it, but it's going to come out and have a hundred and something miles of range or whatever. Probably look that up while we're talking. Um, but yeah, and you can get the plug-in hybrid ones as well. So one on the on the electric end, these are really nice looking. Yes, I've sat in of the gas one, and it's really good looking. It's mm -hmm. kind of in between um, an Equinox and a Trax, or like in between a Rav Four and a CHR. Right. It's yeah. Kind of like halfway in between the like worthless small SUV and like actually useful small SUV. Yeah. It's, and it's if a, you can get this all electric, that'd be fantastic. And yeah. because the interior on these Volvos is kick ass mm -hmm. and the key only didn't work some of the time on a brand new Volvo. So yeah. that was nice too. The, the, I'm, I'm going to challenge you when you're, you know, doing your day job. If you come across a, a Volvo with e, either an R design package on it or one that has the, um, t6 or better like motor in it mm -hmm. um, i need you to take that to a spirited on a spirited drive and i think you will find that those things i i have not found like any car to be more fun i'm not saying the best at it but the most fun i've had in like back roads has been in a volvo so this S90 T6 is what oh. I rented, this one right okay. here. It's very similar to this. I okay. tried to build what it was that I drove. Yeah. It was like 56 grand. Yeah, yeah. But Volvo does not sell cars. They sell SUVs. Correct. So if you find an S90 on a Volvo lot, chances are they will drop their pants for you to sell you the car, yeah. especially if you wave the I'm a Costco member card around. <laughs> Typically, they'll hook, Volvo's like super hooked in with Costco pricing. They get you hooked up. Yeah. Um, so... I drove this, I rented it, I I used Sixth, which is a little bit more expensive car rental service, but out of San Francisco, mm -hmm. a my issue is the or similar. And it used to be that Sixth didn't or, or similar you, and I was like, mm, they're gonna do it. It was three hours to go from San Francisco to where I used to live to go mm -hmm. visit my grandmother. And after having flown three hours, after having worked that day, I was like, you know, if I get a car that doesn't have radar cruise control and I'm uncomfortable, I'm going to be very angry the whole time. Yeah. So if I could guarantee that it was going to be a Camry or an Accord that yeah. was the car, I would be more than happy. If I could guarantee that it was going to be a CRV or a RAV4, that'd be fine. Mm -hmm. If I end up with a Nissan Rogue or a GMC Terrain or a fucking Malibu or something <laughs> like that, yeah. I was going to be very upset. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to spend a little bit more money. And I got this Volvo S90 it was in like the premium Mercedes E-Class or similar tier. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was like 60 bucks a day, like not even that expensive to yeah. rent. I think mm -hmm. that's probably a, um, people mm -hmm. not traveling very much right now. Mm -hmm. I was very safe while I traveled for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it drove really nice. And the engine made the good noise. I think these are turbo and supercharged. Is that the T6 thing? Yeah, the, the T6, um, my Volvo knowledge is a little less. So the T6 used to be turbocharged six, which obviously it's not. It used to be a straight six turbocharged. It's right. a, the T6, I believe at the moment, Hello. is the turbocharged and supercharged motor, but it doesn't have the hybrid system in it. Right. 316 horsepower. It, it felt like that. It got yeah. up and went. It was pretty quick. Okay, this mm -hmm. little fucking thing right here. I didn't have the cool shifter like that. I just yeah. had a regular looking shifter. Yeah. This drive mode thing, I'm going to see if there's a better picture of it. Yeah. There, no, there's almost certainly there won't be. Yeah, that's exactly not what I want to yeah. see. Okay. All right, man, looking mm -hmm. very stylish, etc. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway, you can kind of see it here. 
this is the start switch is a knob and it turns yeah. about 45 degrees to the right to start the car. So yeah. it feels like you're turning a key. It's like a, the tactile feel to it, very good. Mm -hmm. The problem is the key fob is probably an inch to an inch and a half long and kind of a thick boy. <laughs> you have to put the key fob. So if you're not, if you're listening, this is going to be very hard to describe. There's the shifter mm -hmm. along like where you would normally have a shifter. And it's kind of a weird knob shaped thing that you just kind of notch it. Yeah backwards it doesn't actually move you kind of just rock it and then three or four inches back from that there's this knob that sticks out like half an inch and you twist the knob to get it to start and then behind that it kind of dips a little bit and there's a drive mode wheel that's kind of recessed into the thing so that you don't accidentally hit it you have to stuff the key into that little crevice right there and if i find it here volvo s90 key key fob yeah. hopefully they'll show me a picture of it next to the thing um okay here's what the fob looks like looks very nice very yeah. stylish very volvo mm -hmm. yeah. but it doesn't it. fit in the freaking slot so <laughs> like it's physically too big to fit yeah. where it's supposed to fit so <laughs> half of the time i yeah. swear half of the time i would get in i'd set the key precariously where you're supposed to set it mm -hmm. And it would just would it would just sit there on the screen and be like key not detected. Like the key is in the car. Yeah. Keys in the car. My Toyota, I can have the key in my backpack in the trunk. Right. And it will start the car. Yes. He is in the car, but you want me to touch this little this is a good picture of it. The fob is wider than this right here. Yeah. That's a terrible picture. But like yeah. Well, it doesn't fit right there. It doesn't. It's huge. <laughs> and you have to cram it and you just keep and it doesn't. Usually if you had something like that, right? Yeah. It would be the right size and it would slip in just perfectly and there'd be like a little bit of give and then it would, ah, uh, yeah. it would be stuck in there. And then you would know it was in. This just flopped randomly in there. Yeah. Half the time it took me like five minutes of shouting to get the car to start. Maybe I'm a fucking idiot and there's some other way that you do it. But I tapped it on the steering column. I tapped it on the button. I tapped it on the start switch. I tapped it everywhere. Wouldn't fucking do it. Did so you... infuriating about the car and like that's something that i'm not used to driving yeah. toyotas and stuff that where it's like i get in the car and i press on turns the fucking car on right in a three hundred thousand mile car it still does that right so anyway I'm, I'm pretty amped up about it which is fine um we have a volvo at work that has this fucking system too where it like you put the key into the dash like it's a cd and yeah. then it sucks the key away from you and that doesn't fucking work half the time either so, so anyway, if you're not worried about key issues, the rest of the car was fantastic. Fantastic car. <laughs> so so I owned a few Volvos, right? And so I right. owned the key system you're talking about where it goes in and like it's got the start stop button like that on it. Yeah. Um, so the slot is only for charging the battery. Like that's what that's for. It doesn't actually need to go in the slot. Okay, which is weird because I would put the key in the slot and would suck it halfway in then push it back out and say a wrong key. Hmm. And then I would try to hit the start button and it wouldn't start the car because we have an XC70 at work. That also, interesting. interestingly, is a really nice car yes. uh, with 160K on it. A little rear diff wine on there. Hmm. And the uh, door latch for the rear door because it's a wagon doesn't yeah. really work, which you would kind of want on a wagon because yeah. you're getting it to be a wagon. <laughs> anyway, so the S90, back to that. S90 and the S60 is very similar. It's just smaller. Mm -hmm. Infotainment screen's great. It's got mm -hmm. all the features. It's got everything. If you're looking for a premium sedan in kind of the 40 to 50 range, yeah, absolutely, you should buy a Volvo. Right. Because it, it was fast. It was quiet. Um, the EPA thing says 32 miles to the gallon. I blasted around at much higher speeds than the EPA yeah. test probably does and got like 27. Yeah. Which That's was pretty good. My my thing is always if you can afford it, get the Volvo. If all you want is a car, like even, great car, great I th I think car. they're fantastic. I feel we should wrap up. We're getting close to the end. Yes, absolutely. Say, yeah, I do have to say though, my favorite though is the C30. That's a good mm. car too. The C30 I had for a while. My favorite thing mm. about it is I had the. It has a the weird key. Can you pull up with your little uh, Google later here? Just type yeah, in Volvo, Volvo C30 key. So. I'm, I'm trying to think, like, how would you describe? Oh, that? it's got the plastic. Thing. Yes. So it's a regular key fob, much the same way that the key and fob are now one piece. Mm -hmm. This one 
has the fob and then the key that's sticking out of it is just a skinny piece of plastic. Yeah. So now put at the end of key, just put the word bless. And I wonder if it'll pop. Oh, no, no. Hold on. You don't even need to do that. So here, you go uh, from the top picture here, go over three. You see that thing there? So to your to the left of the one you're looking at. You see like the weird looking knob thing? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's the keyless system. Oh, and so then it knows if the keys in the car, my Miata had the same thing. Right. You literally just, yeah. so I was told the car did not have a keyless system. I bought that thing. It's like 20 bucks. You just stick it in. It's like a little antenna booster. And it was the best thing. You just stick it in and you just turn that instead of having to take the key And then you out. can just leave that in the car. Right. It, so was, the, it was the best thing fucking ever. The Miata had that. The prior yeah. owner clearly didn't know how it worked. He had taken that off. And then he would use the emergency key to start the car. Because presumably the car about it. Because it had the right. fucking Mazda credit card the key thing. Yeah. And I used for the longest time because I didn't want to take the credit card key out Yeah. because it was super annoying and it's supposed to fit in your wallet or whatever. And I hated yeah. touching it because it always felt like it was about to fall apart. And they're just, if you want to buy one from a Mazda dealer, there's some stupid price. And then yeah. they don't want to program ones that you order and all this other nonsense. Like here for $109. Yeah, sure. But yeah. The, you can't get people to program them. Mm -hmm. um, I would actually use my MR2 key fits really nicely in the slot <laughs> and just twists and like, oh, it works good. You could yeah. have used anything that was vaguely that shape huh. would have twisted it as long as you had the credit card key in the car. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how key, I like the key and like the new Volvo when you brought it up. I was like, I have to bring that up because just the fact that it's a like, why is it in the Saab location? I, they're obviously just trying to turn into Saab, <laughs> but just like having it in the middle to turn is kind of cool. And I like that. No, and It felt really good with the like couple times like, I had the car for like six days. Yeah. Probably on four occasions did I get in the car and like set the key where it was supposed to go and just twist it and everything worked how it was supposed to. And mm -hmm. it feels really cool when it works. Yeah. It just it has to work. It has to work, right? Yeah. It has to it can't not work. If it right. doesn't work, fuck off. Like I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> right. So yeah. Oh, here's that thing. Average price forty thousand dollars for a new yes. car. Anyway, yeah. yeah. We'll have to get into that some other Yes, ab absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, thank you for coming and yeah. listening to the podcast. Yeah. We had a little bit of a Christmas break, and yeah. a little bit of a New Year's break, and then we had a little bit of a no, Ike lives in fun. DC and the world was about to burn down type of situation. Yeah. Um, so, you know, or not in oh. DC, obviously, but you know, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be living there with all that stuff going on and have yeah. to think about talking to some shit bag. So <laughs> it's been fun. So we're going to get back to normal <laughs> shit here soon. So that's absolutely. So, so we're hoping for another one of these a week. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, I'm just going to go. Thanks for listening. Good night. Good evening, wherever you are, what time it is there. Thanks so much for watching. Have your pets fed or neutered. Yep. That that's the thing you always say. Thank you, Bob uh, Barker. Yes. Boop. And me. Oh, no, that's not the thing I want to do. I want to.